electricity supply in Nigeria for a while to come may remain an area of conversation and concern at all frontiers. For a population of over 150 million and still growing, the below 10,000 megawatts of electricity is a far cry from the average required. Over the years, attempts and actions have been seen in the direction of improving supply. But one of the most significant is the privatization of the power sector in 2013 by the previous administration of President Goodluck Jonathan. Three years later, February 2016 to be precise, Nigeria generated for the first time 5,074 megawatts, which till date remains the highest the country ever produced. Despite this achievement, the system is still challenged as regular supply and outages continue to plague the entire process among all the variables. If we encourage embedded solution, off-grid solution, renewable solution, it will go a long way to catalyze the need of the consumers. Consumers still wonder why not much have been improved since the private takeover of power utilities, doubting the capacity and competences of the new managers. Nigerians have enjoyed electricity relatively in the last four weeks compared to before. So it's not as if there is a deliberate ploy by the suppliers of electricity not to make electricity available. The higher the capacity we deploy, the more the revenue we get, the more money we make eventually when we start to make money. So the less we, we do deploy to the people, the less we make and the less profitable the business becomes. The man who regulates the sector, for instance, tells us so much work is going on and much can be ramped up quickly if gas supply from the Western Axis improves. My problem now is how do I keep it this way? How do I get the gas back? Because I'm doing almost 4,000 megawatts now without gas. Largely from the hydro, largely from embedded power in, a, in, a, in a Ikurudu, and largely from the eastern axis. And I say, when I say without gas, I, mean, I say that with qualification, because the gas that is out is on the western axis. Western, yeah, western. So, and that's about 3,000 megawatts. So if I have that 3,000 megawatts back, and I'm almost at four now, it tells you how close I can be. Another sore point for users is the metering gap, which paves way for estimated billing. Again, several factors must interplay for solution. The operators say investment required are not finding vendor financing because collection losses are high and pricing of electricity is not sacrosanct to production costs. On debts alone from government, ministries, departments and agencies, the sector value chain is being owed about 150 billion naira. Inflation, interest rate and foreign exchange also impedes on the investment drive of the sector. So that while the inflation rate of these utilities at the time of acquisition was between 7 and 8 percent, today that has risen to about 17 percent. Government has taken a position that it will pay. Okay. Government will pay. Uh, the, the problem now is ascertaining the quantum and to whom it is owed. And then, of course, developing a, a, a framework for payment. Another challenge is that most components required to improve the grid system are priced in dollars, even gas required to fire the turbines. But revenue collected after electricity supply is in Naira. The economic of scale means the value has been eroded before it is collected. Until that is resolved, not so much meaningful investment will be made in the sector. Domesticating some variables in the mix is another talking point, and a case has been made for the patronage of locally manufactured meters. Consumers have been accused of energy theft. Some who own smart meters have allegedly bypassed it to cheat the system. The government still needs to come to our head to ensure that we have uniformity in terms of the way our meter looks like, so that it will be easier for us to create some other SME companies. Importing a complete meter, you are creating massive employment for another country. Because it's not just about meter, there are a lot of value addition. There are small components, there are some packages, even transportation. 
is also inclusive. Most of the telephones we use, none was even assembled in Nigeria. So we imported telephones that were made in factories in China. So we exported prosperity to China. And then after we had done that, we went back to China to come and give us loans to build our airports, to build our roads, to build some of our assets. And I think that the lesson from there is that under my watch, uh, I want to keep those jobs in here. Value reorientation is a critical component for sector improvement. But ultimately, if gas supply improves, all the liquidity issues resolved, the debts are paid, the operators will have little or no excuses to make the necessary investment required for the power sector. Olu Phillips, Channels Television News.